Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Habari Live is all the way live again this Saturday morning. Uh, we're going to go over the week's news, sports, entertainment that's happened throughout the week and give you our perspective and keep you informed to what's going on so you can make balanced decisions throughout your life. Uh, today, we have a special guest for our interview. We have Mr. David Heroes. Uh, he's a great artist and uh oh great artist can you hook it up it's right there by you g i'm looking up the camera i'm like the tv's <laughs> off this time yeah but you can always fix those things is the one down at the bottom on yeah Here we go yeah. i never get help to set up anything around here big new tv guys we love the tv right i do yeah. try to help you push me out and tell me to get out Whatever. Like, start. I got it. Here we go. <laughs> anyway, he was introducing Mr. T. Rose. <laughs> 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 um, let's get it going, though. Uh, how you doing today, Mr. David? I'm doing awesome. Thank you very much for having me. And thanks for coming, man. Because you are uh, an inspiration to many around here, definitely in the artist uh, environment. Uh, you're doing a lot of great things around here and uh, making people know exactly what you have been uh, doing out here. Tell them a little bit about yourself and um, and um, how you became an artist. Cool. Yeah. So I uh, mm -hmm. born and raised in Phoenix, uh, the Phoenix area, technically mm -hmm. Gilbert, but, you know, uh, it's one of the suburbs out far east. Uh, went to Purdue University, uh, moved out to L.A. right afterwards and tried to get into uh, the studio industry, you know, the uh, film industry there. Right, right. Uh, worked as an assistant for a little while, did a Martin Lawrence film called uh, National Security. And yeah, uh, just, you yeah. know, just kind of grinding out there for a little while. And it just, I don't know, just playing by the rules just wasn't my thing. So I moved back to Phoenix uh, right when they were starting to do the digital uh, digital film craze. You know, a lot of uh, low budget movies shot on video that were getting picked up and put into like Blockbuster and Hollywood video yeah. and stuff. So jumped back to do my own stuff, um, did a few independent films, and then went back to school, got a screenwriting degree, and uh, which, you know, it's funny because I was making movies without any kind wow. of writing degree, which people would probably be like, oh, we could tell. We could tell you had no <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I went back, got a graduate degree. Uh, that allowed me to teach some college and uh, just focus on writing. And that's what I've been doing ever since. You know, just been... Uh, had a script on the blood list a few years back, uh, which is like the best unproduced horror films in Hollywood. Right. So, which is cool, but it's also like, you know, unproduced script. So right. it's also like, oh, well, you know, it'd be great to be one of the produced scripts. Um, and then just, you know, been uh, hustling, trying to make a couple things happen. And uh, the latest thing, the project that I have, which uh, you have me on here for, is writing the uh, Night of the Chihuahuas comic. Yeah, man. And we love the Night of the Chihuahuas book. <laughs> It's Thank a great you. book, man, and it's uh, exciting that you were able to put together something like that, man, and get it going. Yeah, and uh, it inspired me instantly. Awesome. You know, it's it's you know we, that's what we're trying to do out here. You know, mm -hmm. I'm trying to make, make my own book, and create my own. So looking at someone like you with a finished product and, and showing people how you're doing it, and you're out there talking to people and meeting people, man. And I well, was happy to meet you and, and get in, get your uh, get you to sign the book for me, man. And it was pretty yeah. dope, man. And um, we'll cherish that and keep that up there forever. Yeah, I was gonna say, man, <laughs> seeing seeing it up, seeing it up there when I walked into the studio, I was like, yeah, that's yeah, awesome, man. Most definitely, we let it, every lot of people have asked about it, like, man, what's that, man? And we just let them know, man. It's like, dude, this this guy is dope. 
and uh we let him check out your stuff man and um sweet yeah man we want to also uh thank austin because he uh he's the one that uh put me on to what you were doing because austin is another great artist he's doing a lot of great stuff out here Very and cool. um he uh put us on to you so we the only reason we was down there was to to check out austin so, oh sweet well yeah, thank, yeah, thank yeah. you austin wherever, wherever you're at <laughs> right so we want to give him yeah, he a has thanks a, this morning he has the picture behind you yeah yeah that's austin, austin yeah that's austin picture picture oh, that's austin. yeah that's austin oh, yeah that's he did i was just looking at that that's yeah, like a man, crazy spongebob he's dope, man. yeah I, I like austin and what he does man so that's crazy that you did script writing and, and did the whole hollywood thing for a little while how was the rat race in hollywood trying to get people to see your scripts and What's that like? Uh, you what know, that like? honestly, so what I learned very quickly is that a lot of the industry out there mm-hmm. relies on relationships. Okay. So you either have relationships and that's how you move up or you mm-hmm. got to hustle and build your relationships. Wow. Uh, so it was, I went out there, I was fortunate enough to have like a little cadre of um, alumni. Uh, we all graduated at the same time. Yeah, uh, one of the guys lived in LA and so we all kind of crashed with him. Right. his family uh which, you know they were very supportive but right. i'm sure they were also happy when we all got our own place <laughs> right. uh and so it's like you know it's tough because you got to start at, like i was a production assistant and so okay. i was working you know 50 60 hours uh driving yeah. all across la living in the valley and then you know on the side you're trying to like network with everybody you meet right. and right. everybody's used to that game because everybody knows it and right. so everybody knows that you know when you're making small talk and you're you know doing stuff it's like everybody knows that you've got an agenda and so it's just trying to like make it as genuine as possible and make these like real connections Mm -hmm. uh to get somebody to take a look at what you're doing because if you just walk out there and just start handing out scripts like nobody's you know nobody will make that exactly those things are going right in the trash nobody's gonna take you seriously they're gonna tell all their friends watch out for this person because you know they're just gonna try to get you to read something so um yeah so it was you know it's pretty exhausting i do think that that's something that needs to be better communicated to film student is Mm -hmm. the importance of that because you know you're not going to show up and just you know wave your degree around and say you know i i I graduated read my work um it's a huge hustle and the politics and the um the social networking aspect of it are just as important and sometimes more important depending on who the crowd is as what you wrote wow that's crazy i mean it's like that in the hip-hop community also Mm -hmm. Uh, me me going through that community and trying to get people to hear my music, it was always, who did I know? Yeah. Did I know them? And if I don't know them, it's usually what's going to be my my songs were in the garbage. You know, and, so, yeah, I mean, doesn't that just feel like art, though? Because it's like art, you're always, there's, there's so many other people out there trying to do yeah. the same thing. Yep. And I always tell people, you know, you probably heard it too, or probably mm-hmm. even said it yourself, but it's like, if this were easy, everybody would do it That's because real. everybody wants to do it. But right. the the amount of work that you have to put in mm-hmm. and, you know, you have to make sure that you're connecting to the right people, not right. just because you can't just like go out there and like, you know, uh, carpet bomb your your social networks and, you know, just try to connect with everybody you can mm-hmm. because you're wasting valuable energy by not connecting to the right people right. and then figuring out who those right people are because there's so many scam artists and people who make you think that, you know, oh yeah, I'm a big deal. I know exactly right. what I'm doing. And exactly. then, you know, you wasted so much time before you realize this person don't. is full of it. <laughs> yep. And I've, I've been there too, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's a scam and it's, I mean, you, you want to be, you want to do something good, but there's always so many bad people trying to take what you're doing good, man. And it's, it's a bummer. It makes people not want to go out there and do it. And it's one of the reasons why I, I quit hip hop because it was so many damn artists. So many people that you just get tired of running to yeah. the same people with the same bullshit rundown trying to get your money or trying to get you to spend whatever you do have mm-hmm. instead of trying to get you into the right places. But I guess that that was uh, the script life and everything like that was you didn't, I guess, really didn't like living that way. So you came back. Right? Did you already have your family before you uh, decided to make that move or? Did you start your family when you came back? Yeah, I started my family when we came back. So I was, um, I could not imagine uh, doing what I was doing in Los Angeles with the family. I don't yeah. think that would have been yeah. economically possible or, yeah. you know, anything. But um, yeah, so I mean, when I came back, it was like, when I was out in LA, it was like the idea was, hey man, let's just buy some, let's buy a video camera and let's buy a, a boom microphone and mm-hmm. let's just go make a let's movie. Let's go do it. And out there, it was like, everybody was, you know, and rightfully so, but everybody was like, you know, hey, man, I'm trying to get in this union. I'm trying to like put my hours in so I can qualify for this or, you know, right, I'm trying right. to do. And so it just nobody had that time. And me being I've, I've always had that kind of mentality of like, well, 
if nobody's going to open the door, I'm just going to make my own door. I'm just going to take the motherfucker down or That's something, real. you know? And so I came back here where it was a lot easier to like, you could walk into a coffee shop and just be like, Hey, do you mind if I film someone in the corner over here when mm -hmm. nobody's right. like either at the end of your day or right. at the beginning of your day? Right. And everybody was like happy to help. And then, you know, you try that in California and Los Angeles, especially, mm -hmm. and they're going to pull out their filming permits and say, yeah. you know, well, here's our rate and here's, you know, all the things like they're a lot used to people exactly. trying to do that and everything. Yeah. So, so out here it was just easier to, you easier know. to navigate and yep. everything. So did you get a movie done uh, here or did you ever finish uh, anything? That you yeah. Ever finished yeah. We actually shot a few. Th so ironically, uh, the first thing that we tried to do was a movie version of Night of the Chihuahuas. And okay. it didn't work out because, well, number one, we didn't know what we were doing. I mean, that was just, you know, uh, <laughs> Plain and simple, we had no idea what we were doing. Um, you know, first time we grabbed cameras, and it was like most people in college will do, uh, you know, student films. They'll right. like figure out how to light, figure out how to do all these things. And like Purdue didn't have a, a true film production program. We did film studies. Okay. And so for me, it was like first time I ever grabbed a camera, we tried immediately. It's like, let's make a feature film mostly shot at night <laughs> featuring 20 chihuahuas and blood and gore and weapon effects and it was like you know the dumbest thing you could yeah, possibly do right and so it it didn't work out um but using that got a lot of people interested in making another one because they were like okay. hey this movie blew but you did it it's right. done Right. So we know that we can trust you to, you know, get something, get something done. done. And so the next movie I did was called The Lonely Ones, which we shot up north in Greer. Uh, and that one came out. I was really proud of that one. Still am. Um, that one got on to Netflix. We got uh, every now and then I'll get like an email from some somebody in Argentina or wow. England. It was on TV in England. And so, you know, that one did really well. Uh, and then we shot another movie called Promise. Uh, that one we had to take a big cut on like the budget got cut at the last second and we had to make a few um basically just settle on a few things that i wouldn't have done otherwise right but you know we did make the movie i uh, did get out there it was on amazon prime for a while and so after that though i was tired of doing movies where i constantly had to you know cut corners on my script and stuff right. i was like hey i wrote something i wanted to do something but i'm not going to because we can't afford it or because right. you know we didn't get this location and so at that point i wanted to step back and say you know i'm going to work on my on my writing and try to figure out how to uh how to get productions that could afford what i was trying to do right. uh, which kind of roundabout led me back into comics because with a comic book you can write whatever you want you know it's it's only limited by what can your illustrator what can your artist put on the page and you know you can go wild with your imagination so now with night of the chihuahuas you know whereas when we did the movie we had like you know, a thousand dollars and like no train chihuahuas and you know a bunch of air air soft BB guns instead of shotguns that were constantly falling apart and it was like all these things. So now when we're writing it, uh, the artist Albert he is just drawing things. You know, like uh, the last thing that we did was you know this the truck taking off and there's like all these chihuahuas around which we could <laughs> never we never had more than three chihuahuas on set when we were doing the movie. Wow. But on the page, he's got like twelve of them and they're you know in various forms of mutation right. and they're uh, tearing down telephone poles and doing all the stuff that was like, you know, that didn't cost, like, I didn't have to wrangle a budget and do all the stuff for it. It was just, you know, our imagination and what we could put on the page. So. Right. And you had, you know, the the main character was Leon. Yeah. Yeah. And he's um, in Arizona. Mm -hmm. Did you put in Arizona because you're a Tucson guy and you wanted to make sure you kind of put it in the area yep. that you're used yep. to. Yep, I was born, yeah, born in Tucson, right. uh, born in Tucson, raised in Phoenix, which is funny because, you know, Tucson and Phoenix don't like each other, but <laughs> I love Tucson. I love Southern Arizona. And right. so I always said that when I made, when whatever I created, I wanted it to be who I was. And so this is true Arizona. You know, we got a Latino protagonist, mm -hmm. which, you know, nowadays, uh, you know, I had a heartbreaking moment where somebody really loved the script that I wrote, a production company. Mm -hmm. And the dude was like, well, we're not going to make it. This is an awesome script. But we're not going to make it. I was like, why not? And, he's, and he looked me straight in the eye and he said, who's going to be my lead? You know, this is like an $80 million film that you wrote. Right. Who's your lead? You've got a Latino male character. What Latino male actor can is an A-list actor that can carry an $80 million movie? And I was like, I stumbled. And he was like, that's why. Right. Damn. All right. Well, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. you know. They just told you you got an eighty million dollar film. Yeah, he does, dude. And it was, but that's a, but, but the, you can't get you you don't have that person man, that can portray just, the he's, character. He's closed minded, man. Mm -hmm. 
on this this to me this type this type story it doesn't need a big blockbuster no it doesn't the the story is telling itself you know the story of the the, the chihuahuas and and how this this happened and how this is going down in this town it kind of reminds me like the critters you know know, that's so critters uh tremors like a lot of yeah that, that's i grew what up the on vibe, that's what i wanted that's Definitely. i was like this is my love letter to these movies that i grew up with yeah man and I, I love those movies too growing yep. up because we, we're about the same age you know what i'm saying so mm-hmm. i i definitely love those movies man and those are that's exactly what the feeling that i got you know going through it and everything man so and that's leon and samantha and you've you've done other things man a big thing so i i wanted to ask you about um how did you get into um uh, it's the movie, the Sergeant Lane. Oh, the, so that was funny. Um, so basically, we did Promise, uh, and Promise was featured. It was all about you know this guy and a girl who are t- trying to take a weekend getaway, mm-hmm. and they get ambushed by these cultists. Uh, the cultists are inspired by real life, the FLDS community that lives in like uh, Colorado City, up on the Arizona Utah border, and there's like a lot of really messed up shit that they get into uh, that I used as a Kind of a jumping point for this cult but at the very beginning of the film the dps officer who's investigating them his name is sergeant lane mm-hmm. uh he gets taken out like really quickly and i told the actor because i love the guy so much and i was like dude like i love working with you you're awesome i'm gonna do a web series about sergeant lane leading okay. up to his investigation leading up to that moment because i mean he's got one scene in the movie he oh. shows up and he gets shot and i right. was like wow you know <laughs> but so, he's but he was that interesting that was you were like that's... good and he's a he's he still is he's a great guy um and so i shot that as like a way to kind of get into web series and kind of feel for uh my buddy Eta is uh he was like you know promoting it at the time this mm-hmm. was how old is this man like 10 years ago 11 years ago and so at the time you know web series were sort of just kind of People were trying to, yeah, you know, people. What it was is that people were trying to figure out how to monetize it. So people were shooting things, and then it was like, how do we turn this into a? a, How do we brand this content, and how do we um, make it marketable to where we can afford higher budgets for them? And so that was kind of like both a way for me to expand the story of this movie I wrote, uh, and then work with this actor who I liked a lot, and then also figure out web series. You know, it's like, hey, let's just let's get it out there. and so we try to do it once again as economically as possible. You know, right. it's like couldn't go crazy into uh, budget and stuff like that. But it was a fun way to kind of expand that universe, establish why he was there, right. um, and why he gets got in the, <laughs> in the opening, <laughs> right. you know, in his, right. his first big but scene. But that's a pretty cool idea, man. It is. Like, um, like other people usually don't expunge on the characters like that. And then especially a character that was killed real quickly, yeah. then you were still <laughs> able to go back and and put stories together and call it the chronicles you know what i mean of uh, sergeant lane that's, yeah that's pretty cool man um, <laughs> i see you're into a you are in a lot of projects man it's so dope man and um do you see yourself doing anything else in the future uh, are you still trying to get the night of chihuahuas out there yeah is that the dream yeah now? absolutely so right now um we're putting all of our efforts into so ep- issue number two is going to be coming out here in a few weeks we got mm-hmm. it done um so the way we're going is the independent Anytime you're creating independent art, it's always, you know, your blood, sweat and tears. And it takes a lot of time because you're constantly trying to pull in favors. And, yeah. you know, it's like if, if we had the money to just make it all at once, man, that would yeah. have all come out at once. But for right now we are uh, we sold enough of issue number one to finance issue number two. Okay. Issue number two is coming out in a few weeks. Okay. Uh, we're going to do a Kickstarter for to complete the series. So it's going to be five issues. Yeah. Uh, and that's the way that's that's just a resolution of the of the story mm-hmm. uh, will be five issues. And then we. I've got us. I've got a story. If we do well enough, which you know, knock on wood, we're doing really well so far, and we can keep this momentum going. Right. Um, there is more story to tell in this universe, but yeah. uh, that this story, Leon, Samantha, Johnny, Erica, their story will wrap up in five episodes okay. or five issues. I should five say. Issues. Yeah, and then I've got um, another independent horror film that I wrote uh, is in post production right now. We're hoping to get a rough cut of it done. Any, I mean. Could be coming out anytime. That one's called Big Buck Massacre, and it's a horror comedy about a corporate sales retreat in the wilds of Wisconsin that gets attacked by a zombie deer. <laughs> so it's <laughs> that one I'm really excited about. The deer prosthetics looked amazing. Um, really? It was so much fun to shoot. Who's doing um, the um, the special effects for the deer and everything? So the that one is directed by a guy named Greg Elder, who is the head of. Uh, he was 
he and I met because we were both college instructors at GCU. Mm-hmm. Uh, he actually hired me to teach uh, writing courses for GCU. Uh, he is now over at ASU. Um, he shot that because that's where he's from is uh, back in the Midwest. The person doing that he hired to do the, do you mind if I look it up real quick? No because problem. All right. So since I'm not the one who directed it, I don't have her name top of mind, but she did this movie because she wanted to get more into creature prosthetics and like crazy makeup. Yeah. She does a lot of TV in uh, Chicago where it's like, you know, the Chicago, um, what's that one with the Tom Selleck, uh, the top show. Oh, it's the like blue. Yeah. Something yeah. Like blue, blood, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So she does like makeup for them and stuff wow. like that. And that's her living. And she's got a huge IMDB resume, but her heart was, creature effect she wants right. to do more horror stuff she wants right. to do that so she created this awesome deer for us and i'm trying to look at the thing right now but uh it's gonna be cool and i was telling everybody that you know i haven't seen the rough cut yet but it should be done here pretty quick but like if that came out as good as the uh if the movie is as much fun as we had making it mm-hmm. it's gonna be amazing yeah. but it is low budget it's a horror film right. so you know it'll be definitely for that market but Man. Guys, man, it's amazing, man, what you're doing, man. I, I really, I really am inspired because this is my mission, you know, us, us building Habari Entertainment. Um, we want to go into media of, of all realms. Mm-hmm. And I love comic books. I love drawing. You know, we also have a book that we want to, you want to put out in five parts ourselves. You know oh, cool. I mean? So I want to talk to you about some things like that, man, because uh, you would, you can help me to get my thing. Absolutely. What I'm trying to do. So I just, um, Really appreciate what you're doing, man, because it's been a, a dream of mine all my life to be an artist. And uh, what led you into the the, the horror realm? Because you seem like you really are a big horror fan. Yeah, you, yeah. Who were your big inspirations in the horror realm? Did you, uh, were you a Craven fan? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Like Wes him? Craven is, Wes Craven, rest in peace, was my idol. Um, he, I feel like there's a lot of parallels between, you know, and I mean, obviously he's Wes Craven and I am not, um, right. but you know, there's a lot of, of things about his life that inspired me. You know, mm-hmm. he started out as an academic, he was teaching college for a long time. Oh, yeah. He got into film really late in life. Mm-hmm. Um, and he always approached it very analytically. Like he was always trying to, even when he was doing films like, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street and uh, he always was trying to tell a bigger story mm-hmm. with it. Like mm-hmm. what were these stories really about? Not Definitely. just, you know, somebody slaughtering a bunch right, of scantily right. clad teens. Definitely. It's, you know, a, it's a bigger concept that he's trying to tackle. Mm-hmm. And he got really into the psychology of horror and Definitely. why does it affect us? And right. that really inspired me. Um, so definitely Wes Craven, a uh, big Stephen King fan growing definitely. up. Um, that definitely influenced me. Uh, I went to Catholic schools as I was a kid. And, you know, my parents would get the, the nuns would be calling up my parents to meet with them and discuss these drawings that I was doing in <laughs> class. And, you know, I realized from a very young age that I enjoyed the shock. Like when I could draw something, a story or a sketch or something, and the people would react like, whoa, that's <laughs> right. freaky. Like I enjoyed that as a kid. And so that kind of led to throughout my yeah. life. You know, it's like, yeah. what can I, when I write, how can I get that reaction? every time um, yeah exactly mm-hmm. you know right. the thing is like if people aren't reacting then what's the point you know right. if they put it away it's done and uh, i don't know i could have there's too much in life you got and you know we're parents we know you've Definitely. got too much other things going on that if you didn't distract me from that or make me react right. in some way then mm-hmm. what was, why did i just waste that time right. yeah. and doing something else and the horror is a is an art and i think that um uh, we're losing it kind of nowadays. Uh, we don't see as many big horror films as we used to in the 80s and 90s, or as many as mm-hmm. we used to. Um, I think that uh, the comic book realm, they're, they're trying to touch it a little bit. Marvel's trying to get into it a little bit. They had the, with the, the mutant, New Mutants. They tried to touch on the little horror in mm-hmm. that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, so, that was, yeah, that was, yeah. was terrible. But yeah. uh, Doctor Strange is trying to touch on it also. Mm-hmm. So I think it's going to be, I think uh, the fear factor has can't, uh, been lost a little bit because of, you know, we kind of used to movies. Um, but I think that uh, the next 10 years or so, we're going to see a, a resurgence of horror mm-hmm. yeah, and, and horror films and just getting into that, into that basis because I think uh, people are going to be telling those stories and people are going to be wanting to hear them a lot more. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think I'd so, agree. man. I agree. Um, I think it was I a little falling think, off. Uh, uh, yeah, I definitely think. It was yeah, a lot. A little bit. I like in um, the nineties and early two thousands. Right. Really you had known. Wes Craven. Right. Uh, you had all these people making all these movies, and uh, all these excellent directors. Uh, 
who did uh Hellraiser? That's uh, Clive Barker. There you go, Clive Barker. You had uh the guy, you had, uh Jason. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you had the people who did uh, Michael Myers. It was just a lot of people in the '80s and uh, late '70s, early '80s, going into that that was doing a, a whole lot for the genre. I think I, um, I like what, a couple what? movies nowadays. Like I like the uh, Jordan Peele movies. He's oh. good. Oh, no, yes. Jordan Peele is good. I, I, I love Jordan. Back, like that Get Out. Get Out was yeah. good. That was good. And it's, amazing. He's taking it from a different aspect. Diff- also, yeah, like it's so it. he has a new one coming out too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's, yeah, yeah I can't man. wait for it. Yeah, it's, it looks like it's going to be good, also, man. Because mm-hmm. his his filming, the way he films, his his angles, his cinematography, period, the way he's shooting, everything's always great with this guy. Uh, um, yeah. you know, he's, Us he's is awesome. good. Yep. Yeah, man. Us was I like I, I that plot twist at the end was good. Yeah, man. Like all of that. He's, See, and he's Jordan dope. Peele is attack. He is attacking horror with something to say. Mm-hmm. He's not just making, you know, it's like here's an hour and a half of jump scares. Right. It's right. like he has really got something to say yeah. uh culturally, socially, yeah. and but he's still telling great horror right. stories. So if Definitely. he took out the uh, the social commentary and you know the the layers of uh psychology that are behind his mm-hmm. uh stories, it would still be an effective horror film, but because he does it uh so in such a complex manner, it just it's elevated and it connects to people in a different manner than just, you know, a home invasion movie like us is at its core. Us is a home invasion movie, Mm -hmm. you know, at its core. uh, I think uh, get out would be like, you know, not a home invasion movie because, but it's, or what would you call it? Because he's essentially, you know, uh, lured into a trap and ambushed. Yeah. Kidnapped. Kidnapping. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, a kidnapping. At first, the feel that I got off of get out was, Taken. There you that, go. That, that was the feel that I got out of right. that because it was basically like a kidnap. Right. I gotta come find you. Mm-hmm. Somebody need to save you and get you out of the situation. Right. But you don't even know. Low rail Harry. Yeah. He's trying to say he's the the hero of the show. Right. So there's so many about get out. There's so many like little theories. People saying like that was Lil Rel's little dream that he was a hero and stuff like that. <laughs> there's there was nothing what's it called? It's something was it is it J- being John Malkovich or something like that? Uh-huh. Is that what it's called? Yeah, what, it's saying what? it's saying that's in the same universe. Oh really? It's like Charlie Cop. I would love to see Charlie Cop do a horror movie. Hmm. But uh I don't know. See, that's the thing is I love that there are these ideas, these fan theories and these concepts because it just shows that you know the movie is so not cut and dry there's so right. much so many layers to it yeah. and so many uh things that he he does it he constructs the story so well that he knows what he's doing and mm-hmm. he knows the story but he leaves it up he leaves enough for the audience to sort of fill in some of these That's gaps yep. yeah and he's he's great at that mm-hmm. and um and definitely and uh, he's inspiring man and I, I love what he's doing because you know it's you know it's well, for us, especially for us, for black people, because it's, it's not many out there that's doing it, especially for minorities, period, mm-hmm. man. We, we need to have more of us out here doing it. And just like we were talking about, you know, uh, had trouble getting, getting scripts out because of minorities, yeah. not being able to get a think of a minority as a, as a lead. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? These are problems that we are still seeing. So um, hey, hey, anything that we can do to knock those doors down, and change that stigma and and switch things around. That I'm with it, man, and I, I love what he's doing. He's funny too. I ain't gonna lie to you. show was hilarious. Man. Yeah, Kim that's why Kim, it was Kim so Kim crazy was so to see funny. him come out of left field and right. Be like, Wait a, a minute, you make the scary movies now? Scary movies. Yeah. Right. You know. And but if you watch their show, I always said when you watch the show, the way that show was shot, and the way their skits were shot. And the way their skits were, it was a lot of horror all the time. Mm-hmm. Yep. And the way they did it was always like a movie. Yep. Their skits was always shot with the top, top. I'm like, dang, dude, they always shooting this stuff. The, the shots they would do. It was not like Chappelle's show. It was like a movie. Yeah. No, Chappelle's <laughs> show was definitely like a dude with a camera in the corner. These boys knew what they were doing when they were shooting that shit. <laughs> yeah, Chappelle's show was shot on an like, iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. You, like, <laughs> you would watch Key and Peele, you would literally forget that you were actually yeah, watching a comedy their, show sketch some you of their forget. sketches it felt like a little a little a movie bit, right yeah, it felt a like little, a miniature movie a little movie the way and they shot it the shorts so, yeah man movie yeah. shorts i also agree with you when you say the superhero stuff is trying to be horror 
Yeah, yeah. Because it, it's even in video games. Like, yeah, that's I trying. was playing. I was playing Batman: The mm-hmm. Arkham Knight one, and I was like, last. It was like late last night too, so I was like off, and I was going up, and that dude came out of nowhere. Oh my god! I I, I had I turned off the PlayStation and went <laughs> I went to sleep, bro. <laughs> I went to sleep. You scared of anything, man? They, scared, it's yeah. crazy. It's crazy though. It's crazy though that I feel like they should put the horror in into Batman because he's all about fear. Yeah, you know what I mean. You know yeah. what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Just not as Batman's I think they perspective. They should make a Scarecrow yeah. movie. Well, that you know what I'm saying. The Scarecrow sequences in the last Batman movie were definitely. I haven't seen the one that yeah, just that was came out, freaky, um, but the previous one where yeah. it was uh, Killian Murphy as the Scarecrow, like yeah. those were some really that was freaky, freaky shit, sequences. Man. Definitely. Mm-hmm. I feel like he could get his own, his own set of movies. Yeah, outside it's, of it's scary. Batman. It's, where he is like the icon. He yeah, is the, right. Well, yeah. Hey, DC's been doing a lot of that, so it, mm-hmm. they make it. They I feel like they should have like both perspectives, like as. Yeah. Batman being that's I was having a conversation last night with people about this. Batman is so messed up. It's like we never understood why Bruce Wayne he has the money to actually help Gotham, like build homeless oh, shelters. Go exactly. Then like it's your your coping mechanism is going out dressed as a bat, beating people brains in and yeah, because mm-hmm. he has issues. Ex- exactly. You had you have the money to get a cop. Top, top, been, top therapist. There's been some episodes. There's been some <laughs> you, stuff where they show him doing charities and they show him doing different things to help out. But you're right. You still what beating people's brains in, though. Batman. He, he like, could, Batman. He could buy some police Bruce cars. Ray. Exactly. Yeah. Bat- okay. This he could saying. buy some cars for the police. Yeah. He could buy, have he exactly. Could he but you over here immobilizing people for jaywalking. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, I would personally, I would love to see them do a thing where Batman is confronting like some criminal, and he realizes by the end of it that Wayne Wayne Enterprises policies and their economic impact on mm-hmm. Gotham City led to this person, right. you know, this like who spiraled had, it. Yeah, Definitely. who had no choice but right. to turn to this life of Definitely. crime and stuff like that. And you are, like, and you, some of your things that you've done as a company has hurt the city to make people poor, to put these poor areas, and you're taking economics out of these areas. Mm-hmm. And uh, he is not really not realizing that when it comes to that realization. You know what I mean? And that would be a, a dope episode. He, he, really was, he was talking about, like, I they was just... did stuff like that more with Arrow. Yeah. Uh, where he was, his company, yeah, yeah. where his company was hurting people. And in the comic book also, he dealt with that those type things. I went to the comics um, and things like that. Comic shop yesterday. The com- uh the bookstore just up the street. What is this? <laughs> 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 hey, hey, your face is in the camera too when you said that. <laughs> what is this? Okay. Man, I'm trying to burn my chest hairs off this morning. <laughs> Let's put out I did not get a cup of cup. Oh All my right. goodness. <laughs> you're trying, you're trying wake See, a brother up. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> But yeah, you, I, hey, you I think I said that. it. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Ooh, I didn't know. I was, I was, I thought it was gonna be some wine or something. Wow. But um, I was at the comic shop yesterday. We was talking about it. It was like, if a man, if a rich dude, it just if Jeff Bezos, you know what I'm saying, dressed up as a bat and doing all that stuff, mm-hmm. he'll be a, he'll be an effing lunatic. Mm-hmm. We that's yeah, that's mean, yeah. exactly that's what we that's what we was you know what I'm saying point of, uh Batman's a hero da, da, da. come on now at yeah, this levels the heroes come on now you no. you crazy bro you right. you dressing up as a bat jumping from building to building <laughs> You know All what I'm I saying? can think about is Jeff Bezos' little, <laughs> right. man, I'm little saying. bald ass <laughs> doing trying to pull that off. <laughs> like what? Yeah. He's been through. He's been through a lot of things. He had a he had a tough life, bro. So, hey, we're gonna go to a quick commercial, and we'll be back with uh, David Kiros in a few moments. Abari Entertainment Films present. There's only one name for news with Damon and Aisha. Habari Live Podcast. Habari Entertainment. A race against time. On a quest for glory. (laughs) 
Habari News Weekly, HabariEntertainment.com. Catch us for more. Visit us, HabariEntertainment.com. Welcome back, welcome back. We are here with the author, the author writer, uh, artist, David Kiros. I want to ask you uh, one last question before we get into uh, Abari Weekly and uh, go over the news for the week. What um, What's the future for uh, David Kiros and uh, Night of the Chihuahuas? What What exactly do you see going for yourself and happening for the next in the next couple years here? So I'm going to try to be positive for a change because normally when people ask me that, I'm always like, I don't know. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, assuming that Putin doesn't nuke us all, uh, I am going oh to. Gosh. So. My goal, my hope is, and what what I'm working towards is, we're gonna get Night of the Chihuahuas out there. Uh, all five issues eventually we'll pack them together together into a graphic novel. Oh. Um, but you know, we want to get it out there. We want to create some fun, uh, some enjoyment. You know, we got people. Uh, Chihuahuas are an international thing. We've got That's a lot right. of people actually. Uh, we're getting a lot of hits from Japan, uh, wow. which I know Chihuahuas are like a, a big social thing out there right. as well. So uh, hopefully we can create, you know, something that uh, translates across cultures and, you know, provide some fun entertainment for people. Mm -hmm. uh, we get some people, you know, basically that this story continues. So now right. the Chihuahuas, uh, the sequel, spoiler alert, will be called Chihuahuas from Hell. And it's, you know, the ongoing struggle of, uh, you know, these monstrous chihuahuas that are just terrorizing the desert southwest. Right. I uh, would love to get movie rights sold so that we can do uh, the way that it was always intended to be, that we just didn't have the yeah, money definitely. or know how to do the first time out. Right. Um, and then hopefully uh, some of these other projects I'm working on, uh, we can get some movement on. I've got a couple of working on some screenplays for a couple of uh, directors right now. And. Uh, we've got another comic book kind of in the works right now. Wow. So hopefully this is just the first of many steps and, you yeah. know, uh, kind of getting out there and just creating some awesome horror content that people uh, want to check out and, you know, yeah. provide some joy and some scares in their <clears throat> lives. <Man. laughs> David, it's it's awesome. Awesome. Awesome stuff, man. And I, I, I just, I just want to ask on top of that, would you rather have the movie or would you rather have like um, a full full cartoon um, of your of your sh comic? See, I don't like that you took my question. Because <laughs> that, that's exactly what I was going to ask. Because I was going to ask you, like, since Night of Chihuahuas is pretty much like a horror film or you know horror yeah. comic. Like, if you had, would you choose. like to see it as something kind of like The Boys? Man, I love the boy. That's like and one how, of my favorite shows right how now. How gory. Or uh yeah, um, and bloody. Oh, it's, oh, it's that gory and bloody. No, nah, what about um because I think that Night of Chihuahuas would go would fit well with something gory. Like I can't that. think of that yeah. show, that Amazon Prime show. Invincible. What? Invincible. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's 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 <laughs> they did a really great job with they that did. based on the comic as well. Oh my god. That is so oh, gory. Yeah. Gosh, that is that's a great it's so I okay, so personally, I am. And the last time I it was so funny because somebody was asking me, like, you know, oh, have you watched this movie? You watch this movie? I'm like, I have not, but I have watched these TV shows, you know, because right. it's like nowadays it's just, you know, you're hanging out. You could do a lot, and the budget for these, uh, you know, we're definitely living in a new golden age of television mm -hmm. and the stories you could tell. So that's yeah. good. That's a good thing. Yeah, probably, you know, honestly, yeah, if we could, I feel like, and we're showing it now with the comic book, but, you know, I do feel like this you could support a TV show yeah. with uh, these misadventures of, you know, there's a lot of layers going on behind the scenes of, uh, of what these characters are getting themselves into and stuff. And so, you know, you just got to make sure that you're hitting the, you know, why are audiences tuning into this? Well, they want to see chihuahuas eat people. Right. Um, and so it's like, you know, providing the humor behind that of how yeah. ridiculous it is that these little fur balls are managing to rip people to pieces <laughs> right. while still, you know, continually pushing the envelope with that of uh, episodes or I'm sorry, I keep saying episode uh, issues one and two, you know, people die, but not the way they do in issues three, four and five right. issues three, four and five. Um, the carnage gets kicked up so much. We've got, <laughs> I really can't wait to see Albert bring this to life on the page because uh, writing the kills was so much fun. And it was like, you know, the way that the Chihuahuas are going to manhandle people. And uh, we're getting beyond just, you know, oh no, the troll will rip my throat open right. or something. It's gonna get... <laughs> he said that so casually. Yeah. Right. We're, we're, 
we're getting into like you know chihuahuas actually oh like no <laughs> biting, biting one part of you and then burrowing through your body oh, and coming ooh. out another part of you oh my good uh, so it's gonna be a it's lot be of fun, fun man. oh man oh i, I would love to see that in animation hey <laughs> I that's what i'm saying man it would be both they would be it's great that's why i think it was so good it's for animation and film it's cgi yeah. i can see the cgi when this mm -hmm. would be so awesome in either one, man, it would yeah. be great. They do these Resident Evil ones now that are all CGI film, the CG films, and you know mm -hmm. they're on Netflix and stuff. And like the animation is so great, and I'm like, man, you guys forgot a script. But the, <laughs> right. it looks so cool. And I mean, granted, you know, I grew up, I'm a huge gamer, and so mm -hmm. I love the cutscenes and the Resident Evil games. And it's like they strung those all together, but they just, you know, it's like, okay, but what's it about? Ah, who cares? Right. We'll figure that out. Later. Hey, man, Netflix <laughs> is not great at picking picking uh, shows. No. So, hey, when you get something together, yeah. that, that's probably one of the best people to go to because they take anything. <laughs> and I'm not saying your shit is bad. I'm just yeah. saying that they will take anything. I would sell out real. a heartbeat for that. And they, what I guess they're just saying, like, pick a lot of stuff and hopefully one of them sticks. Mm -hmm. So this 10 of them to the wall, yep. hopefully one of them is good. You yep. know what I mean? So they're just giving a lot of opportunity, which is which is dope. You can look at it which way you want to. Some people say it's it's oversaturation. Some people saying, hey, it's a lot of opportunity for a lot of people to get it to get their stuff out there. And that would be a good good way for real for yep. you, especially nowadays with all with Roku, Netflix, and all these Probably. different options. Yeah. Right, man. So HBO Max. So yeah, man. Yep. It's so, so many much. Outlets, dude, yeah. so I know you're gonna get it out there, yeah. man. I'm, <laughs> we, we just name it off <laughs> <for> streaming <laughs> services. Uh, yeah. And I'm so uh, go through your credit card bill. Let's see what all I'm getting charged <laughs> for. <laughs> and then cable hits the very bottom because yeah. you gotta have that internet deal. Yep. yep. So <laughs> I'm I'm with uh Night of Chihuahuas, man, and we're behind you all the way, bro. And uh when your new episodes come out, please make sure you hit us up. Yep. And uh, for, <laughs> what I say, episodes? yeah, you said episodes. Like, I'm, I'm already ready oh, yeah. for it to be on Netflix. So. Yeah, that's it, man. Issue, yeah, like I said, issue number two should be out in a few weeks. We're going to be at the Verde Valley Comic Con uh, at the end of the month, uh, okay. March 26th. And then Is we're that trying the one in Glendale. Uh, it's actually in Cottonwood, oh, okay, Northern Arizona. Okay, so we're going to take it out there. Uh, That'd we should dope. have okay. a signing at a local comic store again for it. Uh, okay, so I'll make sure I send out the email, to yeah, you. and then um. Uh, Phoenix Fan Fusion, which is Memorial Day weekend here in Phoenix. Yeah, man. Yeah. Definitely uh, tell people how to contact you online, Instagram, Facebook, or how to get in contact you and if they want to talk to you or anything like that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I'm on uh, Twitter. I'm most pro prolific on Twitter at, uh, at L E L David Q U I R O Z J R. Uh, and then also on Instagram, uh, David Q Q U I R O Z J R. Uh, and that's really the only two social media I have, but you can connect with me on there and, um, always love to hear from people, you know, whether you love it or hate it, or as long as I made you feel something, I right. feel like I did my job. So <laughs> man, most definitely dude. And it was great. Great speaking with you. We're going to go to a couple of new stories here. Stick around, man. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, if you have any opinions, you know, whatever you want to say, always got definitely. <laughs> so, um, let's go ahead and if you want to bring that up, I already did it before you said uh, that for sure. So we got Biden Supreme Court pick Jackson to get um, March U.S. Senate committee hearings. So uh, she's going to get uh, hearings, it seems, in March as we're looking at here, uh, which is pretty important. I want to bring a picture up on it for people to see what I'm talking about. Uh, so she'll be getting uh, her hearings to become a Supreme Justice on the hearings on the federal appeal judge. Uh, Kentanji, I think it is. I, I might be destroying that. Brown Jackson, President Joe Biden's nominee, who would become the first black woman to serve on the U.S. Supreme Court, will begin on March 21st, a first step before she can be voted <laughs> on by the full uh, chamber. Um, I might have lost my spot there. But um, what was I going to say? Now, Senate Judiciary Committee uh, Chair, um, they'll be voting on this, uh, what I say, the 24th, and it include uh, testimony from the American Bar Association and other outside witnesses and uh, other people uh, will be taking uh, the stand to look at um, her FBI background check also will be going through. So um, we'll be getting a look at this in the next month or so. so hopefully she gets through and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. And we will be uh, taking a look at that throughout the month of March. And uh, hopefully she gets voted in, man, because that'll be uh, pres unprecedented. And uh, 
and definitely a, a history in the making. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And that's a, a big deal because uh, it's a long time coming, man. It's a goddamn shame, really and truly, that it's been that long. Um, but we also have... We have some uh, th- things to uh, go over for uh, Biden's um, speech this week. What was the speech again? I forgot. The, uh, State of the Union. Union. State of the Union. <laughs> I forget the name of the damn thing. Um, I thought I thought a couple of things I wanted to think about over it was um, I thought it was uh, much more unified looking Congress than the in past years that we've seen. I also thought that uh, Biden uh, painted an optimistic picture of life after COVID-19, which I think is something that needs to be done right now. Um, He also tried to emphasize on inflation, but delivery a healthy dose of economic nationalism. I also thought that uh, Biden touted his accomplishments and punched back against Republican attacks. Uh, He certainly tried to seek out a middle path that focused on what he called the unity agenda with four parts beating the opioid epidemic, taking on mental health, supporting veterans and ending cancer as we know it. So um, those are kind of the things that we took out of, um, out of his speech. I thought it was a decent speech. You know, he did stumble a lot of his, on a lot of his words, but you know, that's, you know, that's something Biden has done for a long time. If you've known him, you know, he had a speech that you speech impairment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, that's stunning, right? right. Yeah. So you, I don't hold those things against him. It's like people try to, um, he got the fucking uh, point across. We know what he's trying to do. Right. He's trying to bring the country back together. The last gentleman, I don't even want to call him a gentleman, the last mm-hmm. person that was in there uh, was not doing that. And uh, you may not Are like Are you talking uh, about the orange? Yeah. You may not like Biden, but at least he's trying to bring the country back together that has been splintered Oompa, over the last, <laughs> <laughs> over the last uh, four years. Now, we did have GOP Congresswomen interrupting Biden during his State of the Union. Uh, it was interrupted by Republican lawmakers who criticized his administration for withdrawal of troops in Afghanistan, the outburst from Representative Lauren uh, Boebert and from Colorado, prompted boos and jeers from Democrats in the chamber. Boebert's comments came as Biden was honoring armed forces members who became sickened after exposure to burn pits, those military members include his son, Bo, who died of cancer in 2015. Now, uh, Republican Lauren Berber uh, tried heckling Biden at the Senate of the Union um, and ended up getting booed even by the Republicans in the attendance. So let's go to the little video, man, we have of uh, her interrupting, talking about uh, the 13, I, I believe that's what she said. I don't know which one's which, I'm going to press this one. Numbness, dizziness a cancer that would put them in a flag draped coffin. I know. One of those, one of those soldiers was my son, Major Bo Biden. I don't know for sure if the burn pit that he lived near, that his hooch was near in Iraq and earlier than that in Kosovo is the cause of his brain cancer, the disease of so many other troops. Oh. <laughs> she get the wrong point for that, man. That's ridiculous, dude. I mean, even we, it's just ridiculous. I mean, we we trying to have a, a state of the union and trying to bring the country together, and we got these people heckling and acting a fool. They were jumping around in the aisles, being silly, and just it was just ridiculous, man. Her and um, what's the other lady? That Marjorie Taylor. Marjorie Green, Taylor. Yeah, Georgia. she's just yeah. ridiculous. Who? Man. Marjorie Taylor Greene. She's, she's, she's you're not you're not in politics, obviously. That, that was the point. That that nah, was it's no who point. who who you should know who that is. Yeah, nah. know, know your enemy, man. Right, <laughs> you should know who that uh, is. Forget she is, everybody. She is uh, <laughs> she is out here trying her best to, like. to keep uh, the Donald Trump name and and brand going. Oh yeah, boo. And, uh, she's you know against everything that you can think of under the sun. I mean, it's, she's ridiculous, man. We have another video. Go to the second one of um, <laughs> which is kind of funny. We have a uh, old girl Bobert looking like she's lost in the uh, in the Senate chamber.
You can't hear who? Oh, now you can hear. Oh. The video's playing. <laughs> oh, I thought it was done. Oh, yeah, but yeah, man. You see, she's walking around lost because she shouldn't be there. <laughs> right. <laughs> Go home. She should not be there. That's why she looks lost because she knows she shouldn't be there at all. She looked like a deer in the headlights. Man, she should not be there. We all know that. Everybody else around her standing up clapping. She just. <laughs> so um, we have a former Missouri detective sentenced to prison in Cameron Lamb shooting death. Eric DeValencare. I know I butchered it. The former Kansas City, Missouri police detective who was convicted of two felonies of the December 2019 shooting of Cameron Lamb was sentenced to six years in prison on Friday. Uh, the Vaclanese, uh, well, I'm sorry, bro, I'm, I'm killing your name, was convicted on one of the count of uh, second degree manslaughter and one kind of armed criminal action. Jackson County uh, Circuit Court presiding Judge J. Dale Young, who presided over uh, the Valencare's bench trial in November and found him guilty, handed down the sentence Friday morning. So that's good that we can get some of these guys, man, who are here shooting people up on the streets in jail, man, and pay the price. Um, so this is another good one. Um, it's, it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's a crazy that you did sentence six years for killing someone, but at least we are able to get some type of justice for some of these kids that's getting killed by these police officer who need better training and, um, and need to be, um, better equipped to handle what's going on out here. Uh, cause, cause you know, they, they're also getting shot at and, and, and also, so, you know, that they're scared. I always say that, man. We we sold many guns in America. You know, what I mean, I'm not giving them excuse. I never will. But uh, it's a, it's a fearful situation that we're out here. It's it's gun versus gun, and the police think they're going to get shot, and everybody think they're going to get shot. So it makes for a bad situation. And I think you know, I always think the guns just should should go away. Period. In all situations. But hey, uh, what you got for Hollywood, Miss Mama? On into Hollywood today. First, I am going to say rest in peace to Johnny Brown. He played Nathan Bookman on Good Times. Oh, man. Rest in peace, bro. Uh, Bookman. He just passed away this morning. Um, He was 84. Mm. 84. So I I do want to say rest in peace to him. Yeah, rest in peace, bro. He he brought a lot of joy to a lot of households on the show. He really did. Um, secondly, we are going to discuss a couple of things today in Hollywood hotness. Mm -hmm. First being, um, you know, we just going to get the bullshit out the way, right? Okay. So we are going to discuss. Please not who I think you're going to talk. Barbara White. Okay, never mind. She is from Casa Grande. Um, and she is accused of theft and um fraud okay What's she, she got um, to do with hollywood though she's in hollywood no she's not in hollywood but this is oh this is just your story this is just one of my stories okay and you threw me off with that one sorry you know just want to get the bullshit out the way first before we go to the hollywood stuff but whatever anyway All um bs Sorry, right. go ahead. <laughs> she's a, she's a Casa Grande woman. Um, you can pull the picture up too if you want to. It was the one that had the three separate photos on it in the email. <clears throat> Pictures don't show up on here. Uh, she was is falsely uh, claimed that she was eligible to win a lottery prize, um, nearly uh, $200,000 worth. It's the one that says Arizona uh, lotto theft. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, she, a grand jury has indicted Barbara K. White. She's 50 years old on uh, one count of theft and one count of fraudulent schemes and practices uh-huh. and one count of perjury. Wow. Um, state prosecutors say that she was not eligible to receive prizes from the Arizona lottery because she was an employee of the took Ch- Chevron in Casa Grande, which wow. is one of the lot of lottery retailers. So she what she do steal it? So what she did was um she 
went to the I, I don't know if she went on her day off mm-hmm. and just went up to the gas station or whatever and bought the lottery ticket, but she got a ticket. She oh. checked the box on the ticket that says, no, I'm not an employee or a retailer. Uh, and then she ended up winning. And ended up winning. And now you're not getting it. And um, it, when she picked up the $191,000 winnings in June of 2020, <clears throat> that's when she told them that, no, she wasn't a retailer and I don't you know, work for a retailer or anything like that. Uh, but Mar- her arraignment is slated for March 10th, which is this coming week um, with Maricopa County. Uh, so she's going to jail for this? She is. She's facing jail time. Yes, she wow. is. Um, she's she stole from the state from, right. from the lottery. So, so she, she, she checked, checked the box, box and said, no, I'm not a employee of a real te- lottery right. retailer. And you can't check. Don't check that box, man. So apparently if you work for. A gas station. That you specific can't. one where the ticket was sold, you can't. Wow, because you could cheat, I guess. Right. So you basically I don't know can't you, play the lottery at, I don't know at the place of business where you work. So how that's could you? Weird, though, so it makes me wonder. So because if it's a game of chance where she just happened to draw the numbers, but they have the scanners that show you, like they, you know, you can come in oh, and say, yeah. "Hey, I won twenty bucks on this," and they just scan the thing and it says, "Yeah, right. here's your twenty bucks." Right. So I always wondered. So is that was that the case? Was it like a uh, do we know was that because if it's only one hundred ninety thousand dollars, it makes me feel like that's a right. scratcher or something. Instead. Right, because yeah. the total winnings was two hundred thousand. Yeah. yeah, but you know, after mm-hmm. Uncle Sam get his cut, it came out to one ninety one. But as far as as they're releasing right now, they're they're just saying that she wasn't eligible to receive the money because wow. she works for she a retailer for that a, the gas station which which she was sold from. Yep. Mm-hmm. yeah man well no, i guess bro. We'll, we'll see what happens at her arraignment on the 10th coming mm-hmm. up this week and keep you po- keep you updated on that sure hope that hundred ninety thousand was worth it <laughs> I, I, I hope it was all too. that money and what what was the next story you had today the next story that i had is the access hollywood story mm-hmm. <clears throat> with zuri hill um so the good thing that i like about Access Hollywood in this particular one. Um, I'm not sure if you guys know, but back in January, um, they partnered or they did an episode for um, missing black people in the community, missing black persons and minorities, black kids or whatever. Yeah, right, right. And that, that... right. So the episode did well in January. Okay. So after that, they was like, okay, well, let's partner. They partnered and collaborated with uh, the Black and Missing Foundation. Um, Their goal is to call attention to missing persons of color with monthly on-air segments. Uh, They are going to be true crime segments led by correspondent Zuri Hall. Um, and it'll also be promoted across all Access Hollywood social media and such things Access like Hollywood, that. Mm-hmm. Sure. And um, yeah. they're going to, uh, the first one they did was they highlighted the case of 39 year old missing mom, Cynthia Batour. Mm-hmm. Um, and their goal is to highlight one story every month. Okay. Um, starting in February. So the first episode they aired was February 28th. All right. Um, and they did a report on Tiffany Foster, who was a mother of three who went missing in Georgia last year. Mm-hmm. And they hope that uh, by working together and combining their platforms, they can raise awareness for the Black and Missing Foundation for people of color in the community. Right, right. Definitely. Anything <clears throat> to help the kids, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Using their platform, yeah, too, because that's definitely. a huge platform. Especially when you're going to come going to take such a small organization and combine it with yeah a Access large hollywood platform which, right, which which does pretty well so right man that's good um i hope that works out for me. what else you got in hollywood today uh that was all that i really had in hollywood um i did wanted to do the rest in peace to johnny brown so we did that and even though it was a breaking news this morning story so that did come out this morning, but 
I just think that, yeah, I kind of said the same thing too. So I'm kind of happy that Access Hollywood partnered with this foundation to do that because I kind of was, was like, well, mm -hmm. we always see documentary series about, you know, little white girls that yeah. go missing and attractive white people are missing. And right. Bam, straight <laughs> yep. to the top. I, right. Yeah. So. I think I have a couple of things to say real quick about Hollywood. First of all, I'm kind of, I don't know how to feel about, you know, like I said the other day, Jack Harlow being in the new White Man Can't Jump. Well, he's white. I don't understand what you mean. I don't know, but he. But he's a basketball player, though, right? Jack Harlow, no, he's, he's a, a rapper. Player? Oh, he's he a is. Rapper. All right. Yeah, I, he, I don't know if he play or what his situation is. And I've never seen him act. You just mm, jumped into he, a whole. I guess I don't know. Bro. It's like you. Mm, I what? don't know. And the you next thing, on, on the, Jack Harlow. Oh, I like his music. But you, anyway, you saying he can't act? Man, his music videos. <laughs> we don't know. We'll see, man. Oh yeah, we. You know, nowadays I get it. To, they just try to grab the biggest names and put them in shit. You know, what yeah, I mean? it's marketing. That's just how it is. Definitely. Man. And um. If Aisha ain't going to talk about it, I guess I'll talk about it. What? <laughs> Kanye West. Hey, I was I was I was leaving it alone this week. I, was, I guess I'll say it. He dropped. The, he made the music video for the song "Easy" when he where he dissed uh, P. Davidson. Right. So in the video, I think what he put he did he buries uh, P. Davidson. Uh, uh, what is it? A paper mache? Yeah, he buries him in a desert yeah. or some shit. It's like a model, a paper yeah. It's mache a no, it's a, a clay. It's claymation. Clay, claymation. Okay. Yeah. Then like it was. Then at the end, it goes. He he has said something about. He keeps calling him Skeet. Wow. <laughs> Skeet Davidson. Wow. <laughs> so he talk about people got hurt. Da da da. Then he goes, uh, JK Skeet Skeet's okay. Then it was like something like that. And it's just crazy the amount of shots he's taken to this guy. You know what I'm saying? But it don't matter. He make, he make, he comes across like a crazy ex. Like right. he he yeah. is. That, that's what he's doing right Somebody, now. Somebody like you know DL Hewley, right? Mm -hmm. He he said something. He was like, "Man, if that was my daughter, I would have been did something to Kanye." Like oh, I, man, that's that's what he get, man. I don't even like do that. I do. But here's I don't question. like talking about this because this is what he get. Right, it's, he shouldn't have married that chick. That's what all the Kardashian dudes she has go through. Three other ex husbands that are on on piece of shit island right now, and we never see the motherfuckers anymore. <laughs> two other ex husbands. Whatever. Two. Did she marry Ray J? No. Okay. She's only been married twice. Whatever. And Kanye was the third marriage. Okay, that's three. Think, think about think about all the other like and so the Kardashian Chris, girls. The bro. Chris Humphreys dude, his NBA career fell apart. He can't even play basketball no more. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> like, look, look, look he saying. married like, he, Chris Humphreys. He he was retarded for doing that shit. Man, dog, he married know. the bitch and did what? Seventy three days later, they it was, was like, they, they was divorced. divorced. And literally at that seventy three days, that's uh, when his career was just like done. Man, I'm not. And after that, you didn't see or hear from hard. him for a while. Yeah. That's hard, man. And the way she do people, she they do say, men. She just ball them up and throw them away. It ain't just her. It's all the country. It's it's that whole family. Man. It's the Kardashian say, Jenner family. They say that uh Kardashian <laughs> Jenners literally <laughs> they literally suck the talent out of dudes. Man, right. Please. What man. Trista Thompson? It seemed like the Jenners on that on aren't as bad as the Kardashians. Right. The Genesis, but they, Chloe they and say, yeah, oh the, my the, lord, the, those girls, they are. Look at what they did with. Do you don't even hear from Lamar Odom like that no yeah, more? Shit, I think Lo, Lamar yeah, Odom. Crazy. Yeah, he went. That's what I'm saying. They right. all go crazy. No, he's on Celebrity Big Brother now. Man, I, I think. And he, there was, he was supposed hit, to be a rumor that he was dating gay, one of the uh, a gay dude. No, right, but no, they squashed that. Mm. <laughs> I don't Supposedly. know the way they be rubbing on. Mm, to, yeah, I, like I said, man. That's what he gets, dude. You, you, you jump into bullshit, you get bullshit. Yeah. Well, you you literally jump. But they have that. legally now. The judge divorced. did legally declare them uh, divorced. divorced and single as of Tuesday. Hey, Amen. Yay. Whatever, dude. But let's talk about um, I Am Legend sequel starring Will Smith and Michael B. Jordan is reportedly in works. What? Uh, Will Smith and Michael B. Jordan will star in uh, and produce the next chapter in the I Am legend franchise according to deadline 
This project is still in the development stage with plot details being kept under wraps. This movie is very intriguing and has us asking questions because we all thought uh, Dr. Robert Neville died at the end of the film. It will be interesting to see what route they decide to take for this project. Uh, some may argue that I Am Legend is one of the best films, if not his best film. The film was uh, the seventh biggest grossest film in 2007, earning around $585 million globally wow. at the box office. It was a good movie. <laughs> with a $150 million uh, budget. Uh, it made history by opening to the largest ever box office, uh, not adjusted by inflation, for a non-Christmas film released in the U.S. Wow, man. Will Smith. Wow. He oh, shit, he's man. so like I this he's dude. so multi talented. Yeah. It don't matter what he do, man. Nah, he was rapping. Man. He was a good rapper. He, he just blows up, man. Right. Whatever he touches, man. It's classic, man, dude. This dude is a uh, is a big fucking star, man. Like kudos but, uh, to him, though. Yeah, like, man. You know what I'm I, I, maybe Michael B. Jordan is the next iteration of the dude, or you know, maybe he's. You his think son, they're gonna explode? Or... That's what I was just about to say. Stop taking the words out of my mouth <laughs> before I could even say them. You said that's gonna be his son. Yeah, because when he he was this the movie he was all alone, right? No, he yeah. had a daughter though. He only had a daughter. Oh, okay. You remember he, in the beginning but he was. The... Right? But she, did she die though? Right? Did she get killed? Oh yeah, that she was in the be... hospital. No, that oh. could be that uh the girl's son though. Yeah, that he was yeah. with. Yeah, that yeah. that yeah that could make that's that right. makes that would make that, that would make very much. More yeah. sense. Yeah, they can do that. And so he like that. has flashbacks and remembers Will's yeah. character mm -hmm. because otherwise, not sure how he's going to be in the sequel right, unless right, it's like right. memories or uh, prequel. You know? But they can go on with or that, his that like if his mom died. Have him as a mentor to mm -hmm. yeah, some but he did. He supposed he died at the end. Yeah, he died. He could be in tapes and video or something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he's like learning from him. From mm -hmm. Michael B. Jordan's a good pig, though. He's a no, good he's, actor. He's a great yeah, actor. Great, like, he's, great. he's amazing. Great, great actor. That should be good, man. So we'll be waiting for that and see what happens on that one. Um, we also want to go into a little sports. We got uh, Devin Booker this week. He went into the health and safety protocols. Um, we hit a. We had a. a, a, a what was it? A game winner. Game winner from Cameron last yeah. night. Yeah, that was uh, awesome. So that was dope, man. And uh, the Suns are on a run, man. And uh, we 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 behind the Suns too. You know what I mean? We're gonna see them make this, another playoff finals run. I think we have it in us, man. To, to, to Let's go, to Warriors, finals, man. <laughs> Don't get locked out. Of as it, as as long as I'm not a Lakers fan right Phoenix now. Phoenix Suns. Yeah. Don't get locked out the house, G. <laughs> And the, uh, the you, when the last time you watched the Sun games, Aisha? She falls asleep instantly. Like right, that. right. Hey. Instant sleeping pill. Yeah. <laughs> that, it's an instant that, sleeping pill with that football. Game ended late last night. That yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It did. The, with me, it's, it's football that instantly put me to sleep. Mm -hmm. I will like at least watch the first half mm -hmm. of basketball before I, I fall asleep. April Fools. It's that second. It's that second half that get me every time. I just be like April Fools. Because the Phoenix Suns always tip off at like eight o'clock. Yeah. And so yep. yeah, by that time, I know I get it. I yeah, get it's it. always late because yeah. they got to think they're trying to fit the game in, but also try to fit in the East Coast people, so it's not too late. So it's so East Coast weird. don't miss it. And yeah, but uh, the Lakers uh, Lost losing again. again. <laughs> uh, not they, surprised. They two yeah. and seventeen right now, aren't they? <clears throat> they're terrible and. Yeah. um I like it. You say yeah. <laughs> I love it. I just hate that they keep blaming Westbrook for everything. I think I think they should blame it's them. Every, it's everybody as a whole. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's everybody as a whole. They don't have blame LeBron for all this uh, chasing Kareem. They that's don't. All he's doing right now. They don't have chemistry right now. I think that should. He shouldn't be taking so many shots. Me myself. He should be trying to get other people going in, man. Instead of trying to score thirty every night. I understand, man. But you're supposed to be the also getting other people going. That's supposed to be what you do. You're supposed to be a point guard. He's supposed to be levitating. So supposed to be elevating those other players. He doesn't play defense. That brought in specifically, so, right? That he right. wanted to specifically play. That's what LeBron with. does. He he'll take away your whole starting five and right. And it's, and then it's, the players around him are garbage. After and that's that. what I say it all the time. Like he did to Chris Love, Kevin. It's all about him scoring. He put Kevin I'm, Love out there in the three point line because I need to score. So I want you out there. And that's why I always say, man, he's not making people better doing that type of stuff. But I'm I'm a I'm a fan of LeBron, but I'm not a Lebr does that make sense? I'm yeah, not a LeBron fan. Yeah. Like yeah, he's he's a great player. Definitely. He's a great no question. Oh my like some of the stuff he be doing on court, Definitely. like 
especially in Miami. You but you also got to see the flaws. Exactly. There's shit. stuff about you know what I'm saying. Like, Everybody true. has flaws in their game. Yeah, I mean, Kobe had flaws it. in his game. LeBron yeah. had flaws yeah, in his no, game. No one's perfect, man. Exactly. No one. So I mean, to think that this dude is perfect, he's a perfect, he's a great person off court. I never take anything away from what he's done, all the things he's done, and for the building schools, school, all of that. All that, man. I never take away from that. He's a great person. I I never can slander him as a as a man because that's not what I'm here to do. I'm just talking about pure what's going on on the court. And how I feel that he, everybody say that he elevates players. But to me, I don't feel as though players that play with LeBron go on to have a successful career by the, with from what he has taught them. Kyrie was already good. Everybody was already good before they play with him. If you were bad when you played with him, you're bad after you play with him too. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't get better. And that's what I'm saying, man. I, I don't feel as though players get better. But hey, that's me. Also, KD made his return. Uh, they lost. <laughs> 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 but um, I, I hopefully, man, the Nets get it together, man. I, I, I no like time the team. ripping that Band-Aid off, did yeah, you? Yeah, I like the team. I like what the Nets are doing. I'm going to say right now. But they're not looking good right now, bro. I'm not a Suns fan, but I hope Chris Paul does get a championship before he that retires. Would be, that would be dope. I would like to see him get one. I he, He's been like, you can see how much he'd be yeah, doing. Man. You know what I'm saying? And he'd be so close. Yeah. And with the Clipper team, if them chumps would have just listened to him instead of trying to bring uh, uh, DeAndre Jordan and Blake Griffin, y'all, man, come on. They should have listened to him because neither one of them. They were a good team. Yeah, but they didn't want to listen to dude. He was the best player. And we look at it now. Yes, he was way better than them cats. Look at their careers. Right. Blake Griffin got hurt. Man, DeAndre Jordan just got waved the other day. He got fired? He got waved. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lakers straight waved him. Like, I don't know if that's true or not, but didn't Jeremy Lin get a 10-day contract? Man, that's what I heard of. Wow. Nick Stoskis, he's just got a two-year contract. Man, dude ain't played in two years and just came back and got another two-year contract. With the Lakers? No. Oh, the Lakers need everybody. No, it wasn't with the Lakers. They need they need Calvin Cambridge from Mike Mike. Dude, they need they need Air Bud. They need not Air Bud. They need they need they need um what what what's the villains in um uh 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 they need help, bro. They, they need the monsters from right. Space Jam. <laughs> they definitely do. They need everybody, everybody they can get. That dog yeah. that's with with we Will got, Smith uh, on TV right now. Harden, Harden's looking good though. Yeah, Philly, he's looking uh, so he's far. looking nice with it. So um, look, they saying that Harden lost weight when he got there. <laughs> as soon as he got traded, he lost weight. I don't know. This dude be wearing a fat suit or something. Man, <laughs> it'd be one minute he's skinny, the yeah, next minute he's he fat. That? Then like he's then, hurt and fat, and then next day he's good and run, man. He kills me with that shit. Like he he was look. You saw him yeah, shooting around wearing, there. Uh, Dragon Ball Z. He got on a he got Wait, on the Martin so- Lawrence Big Mama suit. Nah, he wearing the Medea <laughs> suit, <laughs> right? <laughs> then he go out there who look like trash and get traded, and the next day he's great. Like he's skinny, <laughs> he's skinny right? Looking like like how does he do it? You know, know. hey, I, I don't saw know. A picture. It's amazing. Man. It was like James Harden on the Nets, and it was um the nutty. No, it was James Harden on the Rockets, and it was the Nutty Professor. Wow. Then it goes uh James Harden on the Nets and it was uh Buddy Love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what he's pulling, man. <laughs> man. <laughs> but yeah, man. Um well, I guess that's it for us today, man. We don't have anything else. Yes, no, we, we don't. Do. My bad. We gotta go to the game. We got let's a go. final let's, exam. Let's take a quick break and then we'll be back with the final exam. All righty, welcome back. Let's so, do the final exam. You ready? I am ready. You ready, David? All right. Let's every go, uh, every week, we like to give our guests a final exam. Mm-hmm. And in your final exam, there are five questions. <laughs> if you get three out of five correct, we will donate to your charity of choice. Perfect. Are you ready? I am. All right. And keep in mind that all questions this week are comic based. Ooh, put me on the and spot. cartoon, I guess. <laughs> is it comic and cartoon? Question one What is the name of Homer Simpson's bowling team? The 
uh, is it the pinheads, the pin? It's with a pin. I can remember the shirts. I can tell you who's on the team. All right, I'm going to go with pinheads, even though I don't think that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you are incorrect. Uh, that would be the pin pals. The pin pals. Oh, see, I knew it was pin. All right. close. That's impressive that he yeah, knew it. it. Right. Like, I can't even think of the episode. <laughs> yep, yep. All right. Question two. What is Porky Pig's girlfriend's name? What? I didn't even know you had one. Uh, it's a petunia. It is petunia. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got the one. That one. Hey, that's impressive. That's impressive. That that's impressive. That's impressive right there. That is really impressive. Okay. All right, one and one. Next question is, what name did Marvel Comics start out as? I didn't get this one at all last night. It was nothing. It was nothing like Marvel. I want to say it wasn't epic. Hero comics. I know what it is. Oh. <laughs> Which one was it? That would be timely. Timely publication. Yeah, see, I knew it was nothing like Marvel. I just remember nope. that. All right. What year? Did Marvel start? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, that's a hard one, man. Oy, let's see. That's really tough. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. I'm going to throw this out there. I don't think this is right, but 1932? Oh, he's close. He was close. Wow. It's 1939. Wow. So the same year. Okay, so war started in Europe and Marvel was out. <laughs> I bet you I, I think I do, maybe. All right. I know this one. All right. Last and final question. Yeah, this is Ray pa Raymond Palmer is also known as the... Raymond Palmer? Is also known as the... I know this one. I know this one. Right, everybody else knows this. I don't know this one. <laughs> I know this you one. You got me stumped on this one. What you, what you, what you going to say? The Adam. The Adam. Yeah. Dang. All right. Well, I'm sorry, St. Mary's Food Bank. I tried to get you some money. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. That's dope, Dang. though, man. Ray Palmer. They made, they did them uh, bad on the. Um, CW. CW. They right. did. I don't. I didn't like the dude who played him. I didn't like the way they played his character. Did he also play a Superman? Yeah. I yeah. Think he he played a Superman. He did something. Did you ever watch that? Uh, I think he was on. Uh, that was Superman Returns. League of Legends of Tomorrow. Is that what what he was on? Yeah. Wait, Legends I was thinking of somebody else too. He was on. He was on Wait. Arrow and Legends of Tomorrow. I thought he was on Super uh, Superman Returns. Did he play? Was he in Superman Returns? Brent, what's his name? Brandon Routh. I don't know the dude name. Yeah, Brandon Routh was you're Superman. right. That was Superman. He was in the Brian Singer Superman. The first, the first ones the uh, of the decade. Of yeah, the with 2000s. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was it was like Spacey was Lex Luthor. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he was in that, right? Yeah, he looked like he was like crafted in a laboratory to look just like Superman. Yeah, he was, like perfect. Right. They, I think that because of Kevin Spacey, they kind of mm -hmm. threw those. Don't talk about the those. suit was nice. <laughs> I liked the suit. I like the Superman suit. There. I didn't like the new Lex Luthor, the the, the young dude playing. Mm -hmm. him. I thought he was goofy. Looking. Eisenberg. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I didn't. He's I didn't. Crazy. And I think that the um, the guy they had, the character, the actor they have playing for the Adam in Legends of Tomorrow, or um, I think they have his character played too goofy. Yeah, he, he's but everything about the CW is fucking goofy. I did not like. He takes nothing good, I like serious. the actor for the Flash. He's a good. I like the actor for on the, the Flash. CW. Yeah, I like the actor. I, I He's better than Ezra. I have to disagree. He's better than the dude in the movie. Yeah. Nah, man. I like the movie dude better. Nah, I like the movie. The guy that plays the Flash in the movies. I like him better, man. He has a more. I like him comic better. book accurate. On how I don't Barry know. Allen the Flash is supposed to be. Yeah, he's goofy. Yeah, I mean, this dude, one, the, the the CW Flash, he's just he, awkward. Yeah, <laughs> he's just too awkward. He, he takes awkward. things every, 
everything is oh I didn't think it's just this is my fault. It's bad, 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 bad yeah. script, right. good actor. <laughs> nah, man, Barry ain't supposed to be awkward. Barry is a he's supposed to be a science geek. And Wally, CSI. How do you feel about Wally West being black? In the CW? Yeah. Everything about the CW is trash, dude. <laughs> That's what I think. I, I, they're supposed to get bought out. I hope it happens and they go away. Is my whole. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I just do not like it. You know they have a new series on uh, on the CW too for one of their new uh, superheroes called Naomi. Yeah, I, that. I haven't it's checked it out yet, but it's going to be bad. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think so too. Yeah. It's supposed to be one of their black superhero characters. Sorry, it's going to suck. But you hey, already know how Batwoman is on there, right. so <laughs> bad. It's bad. Yeah. But hey, um, that's a Habari live for this week. That's um the Hollywood Minute and Habari News Weekly. We want to thank David Kiros for coming through. Make Absolutely. sure you guys you check him me. out. Make sure you pick up the um Night of the Chihuahuas, his book, and uh, any other upcoming projects this gentleman have because he's gonna be doing amazing things this coming year. Hey, thanks a so, lot. Uh thanks for tuning in. Peace. Holla, holla.